Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Sari Sabban and in this video I will be demonstrating how you can install the Rosetta and PyRosetta protein modeling software suits. It's very easy, it just takes a long time. So first we navigate to the rosettacommons.org website. There under the software tab we can find the location where we register for a license. And once we register for a license, we will receive a username and password. And then we can navigate to academic download and use that username and password to start our download. Choose the last numbered release. In this case, it's 3.12. And um, go ahead and choose the full source uh, as one bundle. It's uh, quite large, so it will take some time to download. Once the download is complete, we will navigate to the terminal. I prefer to move everything to the home directory. It's easier for me there to, uh, to, to run the compilation and so on. Uh, you can compile the software anywhere you want. I usually compile it on my home directory. In the terminal, you have to first install some packages. Uh, the uh, zlib1g uh, developer, uh, scones, and a build essentials. These packages will be used to install Rosetta. Then we have to uncompress the downloaded file, and this will take some time. Once this is done, I usually prefer to rename the uh, directory. Um, instead of having it Rosetta underscore SR, uh, uh, SRC underscore the date and the release and so on, it's, it's a little bit tedious to write that every time you have to call a binary. So I just rename it to Rosetta. Uh, you can re rename it to anything you want. Uh, it's just more convenient for me uh, if I rename it to Rosetta. And then navigate to the main uh, source uh, directory and there just uh, write the following command, which is scones.py, and the mood is the release mood, and the binaries. This is going to take a very, very long time to compile. Now, there are different ways to compile Rosetta. You can read that in the Rosetta manual in the rosettacommons.org webpage. Uh, but this command will compile everything, the entirety of Rosetta. So it's going to take a very, very long time. Keep your eye on the time. Now, of course, if you have a better computer than the one I have, I'm working on a MacBook Pro from 2011, uh, you will probably be able to compile this faster, especially if you call multiple CPUs. This was compiled on just a single core of a single CPU. Um, you can compile this on a high performance computer, of course, exact, using exactly the same uh, commands. Uh, and of course, that will be much faster if you have uh, access to uh, multiple CPUs. But if you're going to compile this on your local computer, I suggest you do it before you go to sleep. So you can wake up next morning with it uh, compiled. And this is it. Um, this is how you install Rosetta. Uh, to test whether you've co successfully compiled it or not, it seems there, are, there were no errors, but just to make sure, you can navigate to the Rosetta main source binary and, and just call one of the uh, binaries there. I'm calling here the ab initio uh, a binary executable, and you can see it's printing an error. Um, of course, it's printing an error from within Rosetta, so you know it actually works. Um, it's not giving me any bash terminal or command not found and so on. Um, it's, it's, uh, Rosetta is actually working and it's telling me there's an error because I haven't given it any files. I haven't given it any uh, protein structures or any uh, commands. Now to install PyRosetta, uh, you will have to navigate to a different website. You will have to navigate to the Gray Lab website from John Hopkins University. So it's graylab.jhu.edu slash download slash pyrosetta4 slash archive slash release. 
um, it's just the quickest way to uh, to the location where you download from. Now you need a separate license for Pi Rosetta. Uh, when you come to purchase a, a, a license for Rosetta, uh, you will have an option there whether you want it for Rosetta or Pi Rosetta, and you will end up with a different username and password. Here you will find the different you can say flavors of Pi Rosetta, depending on the system you have, depending on the Python uh, you're using. Uh, there are, of course, uh, Python 2 Pi Rosettas, but um, since my, my system is updated and I'm, I'm using Ubuntu, so I will download the uh, Python 3.7 uh, Pi Rosetta for Ubuntu. So that's the choice I'm making here. Pi Rosetta isn't as big as Rosetta, uh, and of course it will not take as long to compile. Once the download is complete, we will um, uncompress the, uh, the file after I move it to the home directory, of course. And I'm doing the same thing here. I'm, I'm renaming uh, the directory to PyRosetta. It's just easier um, to call it, even though we're not going to call it, um, we're not going to call specific binaries from PyRosetta as we do with Rosetta. We, we, we will just write Python scripts and we just import it. It's just easier to handle the directory when just a, a smaller name. Again, you don't have to do that. Um, I, it's just my, my preference on, on the way I use my computer. But if you're going to change the name, you have to make sure that you, you first change the name of the directory, then compile. You can't do the other way around. You can't compile it, then decide to change the directory's name. It will, it, it will break the system. And then I will enter the, uh, the virtual environment. It's always preferable to install Python packages in a virtual environment. And to compile, just write uh, Python 3 and then navigate uh, from PyRosetta to setup, uh, setup.python, setup.py, and then install. And uh, this is it. This is how you compile PyRosetta. Now to test, to make sure that we have successfully uh, compiled PyRosetta. We just open a Python script and we type uh, from PyRosetta import everything and then initiate. And when you execute the, this script, you should not get any errors uh, as such. Uh, again, some printout might not give you a, an indication whether an error or not has occurred, especially if you're using it for the first time. So just type a print hello. And once it prints, you, under, you know it's, uh, it's working. And this is it. Uh, I hope you find that useful. Thank you for watching.